Hey guys, this is Mel, and I am back to talk about Supernatural episode 1315 titled A Most Holy Man, which premiered Thursday, March 8th, 2018 on The CW. I'm recording on March 11th, um, so huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to remind yourselves of those. Otherwise, let's start the 10-minute clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So timeline-wise, I'm not really sure how long it's been since the previous episode, but I'm assuming it's sometime after it maybe it's been a week um but they definitely try to make some leeway in their search for the four ingredients for this spell um so there's that huge episode reminder is the fact that we are searching for one of the ingredients and that is the blood of the most holy man uh, and a huge episode breakdown is pretty only much only one storyline in this episode and that is um trying to well in order to find the blood of the most holy man um they are led to um well, they get word um, by a Margaret Astor, who then leads them to a Richard Green Street, who has the blood of the Most Holy Man, but in a, he won't give it to them unless they're able to procure the stolen skull of St. Peter, and as a trade, he'll give them blood of the Most Holy Man. But along the way, they end up getting um, caught up with a mob boss by the name of Santino Scarpini, who wants the skull for himself. And he says that he wants the brothers to work for him to get the skull. If not, he will kill them. And it's just a whole whole crazy mystery of who they should go for. Also, there's a priest named um, Father Luca Calamiri who is trying to retrieve the skull back for his monastery. Uh, so there's that. There's a huge um, auction for it, a huge shootout for it. Um, but in the end, they do get the skull back. Um, and they do end up getting the blood, um, which I'll talk about a little more later. Uh, but the last scene of the episode is Sam and Dean having their faith in the fact that they could make the world better. Um, or at least that's my understanding of the scene as they were talking about um, the possibility of what, instead of taking on a case by case, what if they could just stop the monsters altogether? Um, so I think that's kind of what they were trying to picture if they, it was possible for them to do such a thing. I think it, it can be. I mean, they were close to making that possible in season eight finale when they had the possibility of closing the gates of hell forever um so there's always a chance but um it's great to see that they have faith that they could do um such a thing or they could make such a difference in the world um and that's mainly because of their influence with uh, father um calamiri um so there's that tidbit wise though we don't see castile in this episode but he was mentioned um and he said to be off getting the fruit from the tree of life another ingredient for the spell um so there's that uh death tally and tally though let's move it with that um margaret astor the dealer in all of this um she was killed by her uh her associate i call him fake cop i don't know the name for him yet it's probably on screen but he was then killed in the shootout and also i'm um, saying scarpati and his men were also killed in the shootout the only one who was left standing was um richard green street as well as the winchesters as well as Father Luca, who only managed to get a, 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 a graze by a bullet. So there's that. Um, moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode. I think, it, now that I think about it, there wasn't a shocking moment when watching the episode. But when I'm thinking about it, there was actually no supernatural beings featured in this episode. We were all dealing with humans in this episode with um, theoretical um, supernatural or mythical properties to them. Um, which I don't think, I think the last time, nothing comes to mind that's similar to like that, except for episode 115, uh, the Bender episode, because even with Castiel not in this episode, we didn't see any mythical or supernatural creatures at all. So that was surprising now that I think about it. So there's that. Uh, moving on to top three favorite moments. Um, I have to say a favorite of mine was just seeing Sam and Dean in this situation, of them being caught in the middle of this mystery Um of this human mystery, I guess you could say, uh, it, it kind of pissed me off that they were being treated as lackeys when there's so much more than that. They could be lethal and they could probably kill the whole mob that was trying to threaten them if they wanted to, but they're good guys, they're conscious people, they're, they have con subconsciouses and all that of being good, so it's like, it just really pisses me off that, um, their legacy or their reputation as being this notorious hunters is like pretty much dismissed when dealing with humans like this crime boss and like all these very uh, 
very uh, morally corrupt people. But it was interesting to see them in this situation where it was humans they had to cater around to than the supernatural. Because um, at least if it was with the supernatural, they can easily kill it without uh, any repercussions, right? Um, but anyways, another favorite of mine has to be Dean's reaction to Sam's hypothetical question about what if the P- Impala was stolen. And then Dean's response was just like, murder, I'll murder them, murder them all. And if no, if I can't have it, nobody can type of thing. I'll torture them until I kill, before I kill them. And it just, it got really dark. And it just shows Dean's further love for his Impala. And Sam was just like, what did you eat? Were you even listening to what I was saying? And, like, Dean's just so stuck in that hypothetical scenario. It was, it was hilarious. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, last favorite of mine has to be the moment where the scout bo- or the fudge, the boy scout moment. And that is when they're both handcuffed to the radiator. And when they're able to, Sam takes out a pile of keys that I guess works like they're like the, the master keys for handcuffs and all that. He takes it out and he uses it to get them out of the handcuffs. And then Dean's like, well, look at you all prepared and stuff like that. It was just, it was a funny little moment. It's the first time we actually get to see them um, using a set of keys to get themselves out of handcuffs. Usually it's them picking locks, which I truly haven't seen in a while. The first time it, that truly comes into mind was the pilot episode. Um, unless I'm skimming over other times. But that's the most noticeable one for me. Um Oh, and the Benders episode of well, he used an antenna to get out of the handcuffs, so that's one as well. But anyways, moving on to top three peeve moments. I th- the peeve, I think, would have to be the fact that it was Father Luca's blood that ended up being the ingredient. The fact that it was the one being the, the being considered the most holy man. He was given that title by the Pope. I don't know, I didn't like it just because of the fact it was predictable. The fact you have... There's so much time spent on hearing this fa- the Father Luca's story and hearing his motivations as to why he wants to get the skull back. And then Sam researching about this guy. It just, the more and more we learned about Luca, it had me thinking, well, maybe he's the loophole. Maybe he's the one that they need the blood for. And it just, it also showed the fact that if they hadn't helped Father Luca like Sam wanted to, if they... Because they did that, they were able to gain his favor and able to get the blood from him later on when they find out he actually was considered the most holy man by the Pope. If they had gone Dean's way and just given the skull, stolen the skull and given it back to um, Richard to trade the suppo- trade him for the blood he claimed to have of the most holy man and just pretty much keep Father Luca in the dust, then they would have lost out on um, Father Luca, gaining favor from Father Luca and therefore losing out on the real blood. Um, so it's just like... It just seemed too predictable for me um, when it finally got revealed, like, oh, he's the blood. It's kind of like, really? I mean, why didn't we think of this before type of thing? We could have foregoed all of this if, yeah. So that was a predictable peeve I did not like. So there's that. But moving on to what moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode? The whole murder mystery thing involved with Sam and Dean. Um, In the producer preview, they did mention they wanted to pay homage to the uh, film noir era. And it definitely felt like that for sure. Um, so there's that. Um, I don't really have any random questions this week that come to mind. Um, yeah, no questions there. But moving on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for thirteen sixteen, it sucks, but it returns March 29th. I mean, we get another hiatus. I mean, we just came back for only two episodes, and now we have to wait two more weeks for this episode, which is the Scooby-Doo crossover episode, guys. I mean, the, the promo was just a little bit, but we got to see them animated for a short mo- moment. And I can't wait. Oh, my God. I mean, we've known about it since May of last year, but to actually see it and see, like, it fully animated is just, I, I can't wait for it. And the synopsis reads for 1316 that... Sam, Dean, and Castiel are transported into the animated world of Scooby-Doo, where they join forces with the Scooby gang to solve a ghostly mystery. I'm just super excited for that, because never did I think that we would... I mean, throughout the whole series of Supernatural, Scooby-Doo is always mentioned in some way or another. Most notably, I remember in Season 2, when... um, Dean's crush for Daphne came up when they in play things, I believe, when they were trying to, um, they, when they had the case of the, the family in. And it's just, uh, just to see it now. And then even in the promo, it showed that 
being called dibs on Daphne already. It's just like, I can't wait to see this. I wonder what the mystery is going to be. If it's going to be a strictly uh, Scooby-Doo type of a mystery, or if it's going to be the mystery of them trying to figure out how to get out of the animated world. Um, so I can't wait to see that. Um, um, it sucks I have to wait two weeks for that, though. Um, but that's about it, guys. What would you guys think of this episode? What do you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? What Are you pr excited for the upcoming crossover episode? Let me know in the comments down below. love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and predictions about what you think is going to happen next. There's the timer. I beat it. Also, um, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, check my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my um, Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff. All found in one place. Go check that out. I'm a little behind, but with this two-week hiatus, I'm bound to catch up. Um, so check that out. Also, check out my WordPress account. The link for that is down below. It's organized over there, but it's more work in progress as well. So keep that in mind, but give it a chance. Also, if you want a detailed recap of this episode, a play-by-play, -play, if you will, uh, check out my live journal entry. The link for that is down below. It's a play-by-play. -play. As I watch episode for the first time, um, it's more to help me keep things in check of the order of which events have happened in the episode as I do tend to go back to in case I need to know if this is the episode of something um, but I hope it helps you too um, the link for that will be down below once it's ready to be posted um, I have to color cord and format and everything but um, I hope you check it out later on but otherwise guys thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for your patience I hope you come back in two weeks to see you have to say about the next episode but until then guys this is Mel wishing you a great day great week wherever you are bye for now